Here's this week's My Boat feature. One of the things we like as boaters is a little quiet time out on the water, especially at anchor. Now while you're out there, you may want to run some of your AC powered appliances, and that means starting a generator or using an inverter. So what we're going to cover this week on My Boat is how to install an inverter like this True Power Combi from Pro Mariner. As always, task one was to unpack the inverter system and check all of the components. The model we installed is a 2000 watt pure sine wave with the clean power required by computers and sensitive electronics. On the charger side, it delivers up to 200 amps. Since I was working on top of the boat's batteries, I covered them with a rubber mat for safety before getting started. Having selected the forward compartment bulkhead to locate the combi inverter charger, clearances had to be measured and confirmed. Given the 44 pound or 20 kilogram weight of the unit, the fact that only I could fit into the space, two lengths of 2x4 were cut to support the inverter at the correct height. Once in position, the mounting holes were drilled. Again using the supports to position the inverter, stainless steel screws were used to secure it. Moving on to the electrical side, I started by securing the block for the overcurrent fuse that will protect the DC service side and is required by code. The first connection was from the DC input to the fuse block. Having calculated the load and cable length, double zero or double lot cable was selected for connecting to the battery bank. I had pre-measured and ordered the cables from the local chandlery. A second cable was connected to the fuse block, then the 300 amp fuse was inserted behind the washers on the terminals and the nuts tightened. Next the negative cable was attached to the unit's negative DC input terminal and secured. Finally the supplied terminal covers were installed on the negative and positive terminals, then the cover for the fuse was snapped into place. The owner of this boat would like to be able to have ICE, which is AC powered, and the television operating underway or at anchor without firing the generator. So we're going to hook it up so we can do the ice maker and the television. Getting started, the ice maker was removed and disconnected from its current AC source. Now this is where we got creative. Since the circuit for the ice maker was dedicated, we decided to use it to power the inverter charger rather than take the salon apart to run an AC line direct to the panel. Marine grade AC cable was then stripped and marine grade spade terminals crimped on the common hot and ground wires. These were connected to the matching terminals on the receptacle and the receptacle was reassembled. The owner of the boat has suggested this location behind this locker door to put the plug and because there's a risk of water we're going to install a GFI receptacle. After removing the locker liner, the outline of the electrical box and the receptacle were traced for the cutout. The receptacle was then inserted and the faceplate installed temporarily. As always, routing the AC input and output cables down below deck to the Pro Mariner Combi's location took some time. After prepping the cable and components, the cover was slid onto the cables, then following Pro Mariner's excellent instructions, the input and output AC lines were secured to the correct terminals and the protective cover installed. Back on deck, the output AC lines were connected to the GFI receptacle with ring terminals and the box secured to the receptacle. Next, I removed the control panel from the Combi 2000 PS unit and replaced it with the filler plate. The supplied remote data cable for the panel was fed down from the locker then plugged into the inverter. Finally, the remote was installed in the surface mount housing and connected to the data line. Then both the inverter monitor and previously installed ProMariner battery monitor were secured to the locker. Back below I connected the chassis ground to the battery bank. Then the battery temperature wire was connected. Last were the positive and negative cables to the battery bank. Finally, the battery type flooded was selected and the ProMariner was set to go. So now's the moment of truth. Turn on the inverter and see if we can watch some television. We have green lights on the inverter that say it's all good and power to the television. <laughs> 